Hello Internet, I'm Dan. And I'm Chaz. This is Wine and Serious Business, episode 242. We're here with some more Chardonnay. Just like Dan yeah. talked about before, we got three bottles of Oregon Chardonnay. Uh, stuff we check it on, and some, some newcomers, I think. Uh, I don't know if we've done the Freedom Hill bottling from St. Innocent here before, but these are all 2012 Oregon Chardonnays, and I've just been in the mood to drink Chardonnay, so we're going to drink them. I feel like we have this one in particular I'm pretty excited to try. I've had good experiences with other vintages in the past, and I've literally had my hand on the bottle a couple times, yeah. managed to get distracted by somebody else and haven't bought any yet, so I'm really glad you picked it out to do this on the show. Yeah, this is the 2012 Willamette Valley Crowley Chardonnay, 12.5 uh, alcohol, and yeah, I've loved his wines in the past. Yeah. So yeah. He does great work with Chardonnay, and I think this bottle in particular has been uh, really good value every year. See, this is right around 20 bucks, right? Low 20s? Yeah, yeah it was like 23, that 23 sounds somewhere. right. Yeah. And uh, another cool thing that actually kind of screwed me up when I was first looking to buy this, this is all, four win all fruit from the Four Winds Vineyard which the Four Winds Vineyard is something we love every year, right? Mm -hmm. Like that's a great bottle of wine. Um, it's just the declassified fruit, so. Yeah, there we go. My hair is a mess today. God uh, damn it. Mm. it. Smells really good. I think got a little, a little uh, like yellow plum, little sour mm, apple going on there. Yeah, like a yellow plum thing. Let's try to figure out where the fruit is. It's not, not stone fruity, it's like, Agree with the apples, maybe a little sour apple. The malolactic fermentation, a little bit of that, a little bit of that aroma is creeping into, the, is, is there as well. Mm -hmm. A little bit of pineapple, I think. Yeah, a little bit of pineapple, but uh, good complexity, kind of an engaging nose. Yeah, yeah. It's and the, the way the acidity is there on the nose is always also really nice. Mmm. Racy acidity, killer. Yeah. Boy, good texture too. Yeah, man, there's a really nice touch of oak in there. You can definitely taste awesome. it, giving it some roundness. Definitely some of that ML there, too. This isn't a heavy wine. No. Um, but, but those of you have been watching for a while, I know I lean a little bit towards the heavier side of the Oregon stuff. Like the real stainless steel, really racy Chardonnay, not as much for me. I enjoy them, but I do like a little bit of richness. Yeah. Um, and this is actually, I think, a great example of that. It's not a heavy wine. But there's still lots of, like, green apple flavors, a lot of crisp yeah. acidity there. You know, but... A little bit of weight too. I know that's what that's what I like about it. There's like this really awesome uh, play between some of the rich flavors that you get out of a larger wine. There's definitely a little bit of that richness underlying this like really racy, strong citrus and sour like green apple uh, flavors, um, and the way that they interact on the palate with that load of acid is just awesome. Uh, all really good intensity on this wine. This is this is a real joy to drink. Yeah. I will say it's a little on the cold side too, so I think it's probably even a little more complexity than come out. Yeah, sorry about degrees. that. I'm not too worried about it. I just, I just want to. Yeah, point that make, out. Make These are cold. Of that. Yeah. Um, which makes me excited. I'll have to pick mm. up a bottle or two because at this price point, this is this is really enjoyable. Yeah, the finish is a lot of sour apples. The acid sort of cleans the cheeks a little bit. I mean, man, it makes my mouth water actually the way it, the way it finishes it out. This is really really refreshing. So. Yeah, just a good sense of balance too. I think, mm -hmm. I, I think, w I think without some of the structural elements, like this could easily drift towards being too acidic, too crisp. Mm -hmm. And likewise, without this fruit, right? Like if the structure was dominant, if those oak flavors didn't have that backing, I agree. I'd have a tough time with it. But as it stands, things are working together really well right yeah, now. Yeah, really delicious. Um, Eighty-nine okay. points, right in that, right in that area. Yeah. Plus eighty-nine. Uh, could do with. I mean, maybe a little. Yeah, 89 plus for me. I feel like I'm being a little stingy. It's it's, it's almost there. Not quite. Not quite. Not quite to 90 for me. Uh, but actually, you know, three or four degrees warmer that might push it over. Yeah, I'm sorry. Another couple of months. Sorry, Tyson Crowley. Yeah, no, screwed you. No, I screwed you. No, the wine's fantastic. <laughs> yeah. uh, and yeah. at, at the low twenty dollar price point, I recommend it to anybody. Absolutely. So the next one we've got is the 2012 Saint Innocent Freedom Hill Chardonnay. This is a single vineyard bottling. Um, I do believe there is one tier above this, mm. like they do a, 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 a like a block designator or something. Oh, really? Like that. Okay. I believe we have done this before, but it's been a while. So. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, it's, it has been a very long time. So uh, fourteen two alcohol. All right. right there. All Dijon clone. This the one thing I do love about Saint Vincent wines, they put a ton of information on the label. Yeah. I mean, you it's a, it's a 
it's a book back here, but it's all the, the information about, I mean, where it was harvested even, uh, or I mean, like the crop level, uh, how many production, it, the harvest dates exactly that they harvested uh, to get the wines or the, the fruit. So pretty killer. Yeah, Freedom like Hill's a stuff. great vineyard. We've had a lot of, lot of stuff from them on here fairly, uh, fairly recently. Yep. Um, but yeah, always enjoy wine from that vineyard. St. Innocent's been in the game for a long time, too, I think. They uh, have. I think since the 80s. Mark Vlasic's the winemaker. And he, yeah, he makes really good Pinot. I like his Pinot. It's took a step down in intensity immediately on the nose, which is making me kind of struggle initially. So. A little less fruit. I'm getting maybe like some lemons, uh, including a little lemon zest. There um, and still, still a little bit of that maybe that barrel, little leaves, something in that yeah, direction, yeah. structure too. A um, little more, a little more, a uh, little more mellow on the nose, I think. Not as fruity, but still, you know, a couple elements playing well together there. Maybe, maybe just a little bit of apples coming out of it too, but uh, yeah, the the nose is a touchdown in intensity. Nice clear fruit on the palate, though. Boy, that kind of. Uh, Kind of surprised, like the the nose the nose is pretty subtle, but I think just a real nice, mm. crisp, clear apple flavor mm -hmm. on the palate there makes this really enjoyable right on contact. I don't know that I picked this out of Chardonnay, tasting blind. That's an interesting point. I'd probably think twice about it too. Yeah, I mean this it, it's it's definitely not in the normal style that the Chardonnays have. Like they got a little bit of that richness from like a malolactic fermentation. Um, this doesn't have a whole lot of that. It's really just bright fruit and then it like it sort of tapers off. There's no secondary wash of acid or anything. It's it's uh, really just fruity and mm -hmm. tapers off. It's got a nice long finish in mid-palate. It's really actually quite nice. Whole cluster of crest after setting the barrel fermented using three yeasts. Finished malolactic fermentation and aged on the Surly's for 11 months. There we go. Okay. Yeah. I feel like you can taste that. I still haven't yeah. really nailed down what these are like, but I, I, I think it's in there. Um, <laughs> winds, winds <laughs> banging doors around in the house. Yeah. Um, wow. But uh, but the, but the apples have like kind of a sweet feeling to them. They're definitely not like like your your really tart like Granny Smith or like Braeburn apples. There's that like real strong acidity on there. Mm -mm. A little bit of crispness, but uh, but good fruit flavors. You take more sips of this one's actually. This is a really interesting wine, mm -hmm. uh, in a very good way because um, it's just completely not normal. I guess. I guess I, I was expecting something completely different, and uh, and it's really enjoyable what it is. So yeah, maybe a little bit of like floral honey there too. Got some I would agree. It's, it's like edging towards a little bit of sweetness, but it doesn't doesn't really taste doesn't good there. Yeah. yeah. The more sips you take, the acid is definitely there. It's with a stronger feel. Um, yeah. I haven't said much about this wine. I'm struggling with it. I'm completely. It. To be honest, it almost. I mean, it just tastes like. Uh, it, yeah. I don't know. But pretty. Yeah, pretty go ahead. Pretty Sorry. Yeah, Sorry. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pretty. Pretty straightforward flavors. I think there are some good elements going on here. Um, they're definitely on the subtle side. I think it'd be uh, it'd be easy to lose it. I think if you're eating it with with spiced food or something like that, um, definitely keep it to itself or like again with a little bit of cheese or something like that to kind of enjoy those subtle elements. Um, in general, I guess I yeah I, I like I like a little more intensity in the flavors. Um, Eighty seven for me. Uh, well put together. Enjoyable, but uh, but I, yeah, I like a little more, mm -hmm. a little more punch. In the well, I was trying to think about what these flavors are, are coming across to me as, and, and it sort of reminds me of when you get when you're cutting a cantaloupe mm -hmm. and you get to right to the edge, mm -hmm. right? And it's, it's still like it's still got some of those melony flavors, like very cold melon, but then it's got a little bit of the grayness. Like right? we're not talking like into the rind. It's like, not bitter. Yeah, not bitter, yeah. but it's just like a, sort of a green fruited flavor, which is very strange. It's it's. Uh, uh, interesting, but sure. uh, but yeah, not. I mean, all all in all, a good wine. Just 80, 86, 87 points for me too. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure. I like it, but it's yep. Yeah, that's all I can. Not, not a lot of excitement there, but yeah. yeah. All right, so last wine.
my tiredness is coming through. I had a hard week at work this this week, so to make sorry, work days. sorry guys. Wow. Yeah, I, well, three twelve hour three twelve hour days in a row where I worked the entire twelve hours. Got like thirty minutes of break. Day shift man. <laughs> Crazy. All right, so the last wine we have here is one we typically try out every year. Dan's a wine club member there. This is the uh, Domaine Druin Arthur or Artur. Or, yeah. Yeah. Depends on the French you are. But Dundee Hills, 2012 Chardonnay. So this one is 14-1 uh, alcohol. So it's it does, and despite having tasted this wine over a number of years, I still don't really feel like I've got. Like I've got a feel for it. It really changes for me year to year. I have it very does. different experiences with it on release after it's been out for a while, and I I don't know what to expect, expect or really how to predict it. So so it's yeah. an interesting one to get on the show. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Feels like it's really walking the middle ground nose wise. It's, Big to, time, to me, it's yeah. still like kind of the more more lighter sense again, kind of like apples, maybe a little floral character. You know, I was gonna say the floral stick sticks out to me, like the white white Asian pears. Yeah, that, that there thing it is. that thing sticks yeah, out. Like right? it's it's fruity. It smells fruity, but it smells like the intensity is dialed down. It's like when you cut one of those pears, or when you when you have one of those pears, uh, the zest they throw up in the air is very yeah. similar to the aroma that I'm getting here. Yeah, like combine with some like honeydew or you know, or not honeydew melon, talking melons, um, some uh, some. Some sort of floral characteristic, yeah, but definitely not like a peach or a pineapple or something no, or, or more no. tropical. It's still no. Nope. Still on the lighter side. I'm not getting any oak character on the nose either, which mm -hmm. works out all right. There's still some decent, uh, decent fruit complexity there. Just named after Veronique's son. Mm -hmm. Wow, nice wine. Definitely on the, the the brighter, crisper side on the palate. Uh -huh. Boy, the acidity is really has mm -hmm. a refined feel to it. I kind of feel like it's kind of like green apples, but it sits really cleanly on the palate. Um, good structure. The white pears are definitely there. Um, that I was talking about on the nose and the palate. Um, there, there's definitely some something a little more z like zesty or, or, or sour. Um, green, green apples, maybe, but like. Uh, a little like lime peel or something. Yeah, yeah, we're edging yeah. towards citrus, but there, but it, it stays a little more uh, sour instead of tart. It's 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 neat, but the acidity across the top on this is just killer. It's, yeah, it's really quite delicious. It's really delicious. Great texture to that, I think. I'm definitely getting a little bit of a little bit of oak here on the on the mid palate. It kind of sits there along with the acidity. Um, I think they're pretty well in balance. Mm -hmm. um, those structural elements seem to kind of uh, rise above the fruit for me at this point on the mid-palate, um, which detracts a little bit for me because I think the fruit is nice, but it's real subtle like Chaz was talking about. Yes. Um, so it's really easy to kind of overshadow that. Overall quite nice though. I mean, really refreshing. Last, the acid sticks around for a long time. It has a really refreshing feel and sort of similar to the Crowley. It almost makes my mouth water the way that it interacts with the palate. Um, I like it. So. Some years, some years this wine can be a little tough, or it can be a little totally. un uninteresting, you know. And then some years, um, I find it in balance, and, and, and in this one in particular, the acid is really nice. So. And people that know it better talk about how it ages or whatever. I still, boy, I, I'm still clueless. Yeah. Uh, when it comes to that, or, or like I, we feel a little bit better about Pinot Noir. Some like five or six year old ones, but never, yeah. never passed that. So I'm interested, you know. Or like some bottles of Pinot Noir we try, we're like, ah, this just needs a little about six months to come together or something like that. I'm clueless as far as Chardonnay goes when it comes to that. Same here. So where is where is the, one thing I want to point out is where is the Crowley felt like a uh, um, a wine that was around 12 percent alcohol, 12 and a half percent alcohol. Same innocent was a little more. Like a little more body in the mouth, right? Sure. This one feels a little less. Like it feels back down in the low 13s or something. Like I don't get the alcohol or the heat or the body. I, I out agree of it. with that. Yep. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm not feeling that at all. It's definitely it's definitely like light and crisp and refreshing. Yeah, really quite nice. So 88 plus, 8 end points again for me. I'm really liking this vintage of Arthur. All right, 88 even for me. I feel like the structural element's rising above the fruit, kind of holding it back for me a little bit. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna guess, I'm gonna throw that out there. I know some of you who know this wine a lot better than I do watch the show. If you feel like that's something that like tapers off over time, the, kind of, the fruit kind of expands after the wine's been out for a while, yeah. let us know, we'd love to hear opinions. Actually, about any of these wines, how you all feel that they 
how, how they age, because I think somebody watching this show probably has opinions about all of them. And I've, I've been putting a lot of Chardonnay in the cellar lately. Over the last, since 2010, yeah. a lot of Chardonnay has been wow. ending up in the cellar. So cool. I want to start there's aging it. There's I, more and more good stuff out there. I opened a 10 uh, uh, Cameron. Oh, yeah. 2010 Cameron Clo Electric recently that was just smashing. So, and we're to start. I got a whole bunch. Of them. Anyway. I've been burned enough times lately that I'm reluctant to age my Chardonnay. Kind of really? like I've had disappointing experiences on bottles that have been aged, and, and 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 I think I may have talked about this on the show before. I think a lot of people, uh, I think a lot of people now use premature oxidation as an excuse for mm. Chardonnays that just didn't age well. Um, so it's kind of yeah, like it's awesome. kind of like this catch-all. So so I'm kind of gun shy. Yeah. I've had good experience with old Chardonnays, but more bad ones, I think. So uh, I'm willing so to gamble at this point. Right? <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Um, well, that's our. Sh or what was our question of the day going to be? Uh, so you got to come. I, man, stuff. I had a I had a good. I was sitting at my desk today. I'm like, oh yeah, that's a good question. We should talk to people about that. Um, ah, here we go. Uh, one of our biggest fans, if you've been following the show, the show for a while, I'm sure you've seen his name in the comments. By the time you see this show, John Moser will have come and visited the Lamb Valley for the he first will. time and left, and that makes for an interesting question. Um, out of all the wineries that you hear us talk about, um, if we were to all go visit one together, which winery would we all go hang out at for an hour? Huh. That's awesome. Yeah. Let us know. So, and, and if you live in Oregon, we'll hang out with you there sometimes. That'd be awesome. Good chance. Later, Cheers. guys.